Hi friends! Today is going to be my wrap up for the month of September. That felt really weird to say, mostly because I haven't filmed my wrap up for August yet and we're talking about September. I'm going to do something a little different this month. Instead of filming a wrap up at the end of the month, I'm going to film my wrap up as I finish books. So it will be like a vlog style of wrap up. I have a large TBR this month. I think it's over 20 books. And in October, I always try to read 31 books in October. Knowing that I typically forget half of what the book's about by the time I get to the end of the month if I read it at the beginning of the month. And also who's going to remember that much stuff about that many books? Um, I decided I wanted to do Flash removing the tripod. Thank you. We're probably in a different frame now. It's Flash's fault. Moving on. I decided that because I'm going to be reading so many books and I want to give the best review possible for them that I would try a vlog style wrap up. So today is September 3rd. I've finished two books today. So let's talk about it. The first book that I read this month was The Bookish Life of Gina Hill by Abby Waxman. This is actually a reread for me. I originally gave this a 4.75 out of 5 stars. This is one of my all-time favorite books. I absolutely love it. This book follows Nina Hill, clearly from the title. She is in her mid-20s. She lives in LA and she lives on her own with her cat Phil. Nina grew up with a mother who was a photographer and was hardly ever around. She basically carried Nina around until she was too big to fit in the dresser drawer at the hotel she was staying in and then she hired a nanny and sent Nina off to live with this nanny while she was traveling the world. She has never known who her father was. As far as she was concerned her mother didn't know who her father was and it is essentially just Nina has had this nanny and that's pretty much it her entire life. She grew up, she works at a bookstore, she has a very detailed outline of how her days are going to go. She plans her days, her workouts, her meals. She has like a whole schedule. She is very much a person who gets anxious if things do not go to plan. She plans things out as well as possible. She's very analytical about that. Nina has a lot of anxiety and I feel that. This book starts out with Nina learning very early on that she actually did have a father. Surprise, surprise. And it was someone that her mom knew who he was and he has recently died and he left Nina something in his will. So Nina is addressed by this lawyer who is basically saying, we need you to come to the reading of this will. And oh, by the way, you're probably going to be contacted by some of your family. So Nina finds out that not only does she actually know who her father was and that he's passed, but her father had several wives, several children. And so Nina has brothers, sisters, nieces, nephews, great nieces and great nephews. Her father was very old when he died. He was in his 70s and he had children from the age of 20 until about 60. So she has a, a wide variety of age of siblings and nieces, nephews, great nieces and nephews, etc. So Nina goes from having this very small family to this huge family and it is stressful for her. Some people are happy to have her, some people not so much because some people think maybe she's just a gold digger trying to get in on this guy's money because no one has ever heard of her. And it turns out one of her brothers, her older brother, is only about three months older than her and her dad was married to his mom at the time. So that's fun. On top of all of that, Nina is in this quiz team and they go around to different bars and they try to win like this quiz championship and she has a crush on a guy from one of the other teams and it might be possible that he has a crush on Nina too. So this is a romance, it's a family drama, it's got all of the things, it's got all of the anxiety, it is a rom-com at its highest form but also one of my favorite things about this book that I just absolutely love is Nina's father and he was not the greatest man he was not the best father at any times obviously from the fact that she has a brother that's three months older than her but because he's already gone because he has already died the only view that Nina gets of him and therefore we get of him is from the different people who have known him throughout his life whether it was his children who he had in his 20s or his children that he had in his 60s and 
because everybody's seen this different part of him you really get a different viewpoint of him throughout his life and you can kind of take that into your own life and into your own world and see that everybody's not going to see you the same way. You're never the same person to every person. And so therefore, each person is going to know a little bit of you. And it takes this whole collection of people to really give someone a sense of who you are. And you can't just take one person's perception of you and not be who you are. It's everyone that you know, everyone that you're close to, or people that you maybe aren't as close to as you used to be. And it takes that collective of people to really make a person. It's one of my favorite books of all time. I loved it. I'm so happy I reread it. I've been talking about it for 20 minutes now. So clearly, I enjoyed it. The other book that I finished today is The Things She's Seen. This book was originally when published in Australia under the name of Catching Teller Crow. And it was written by Amblin and Ezekiel Quamalina. I gave it a four out of five stars. This book follows three different perspectives at different points throughout the book. But we start off with Beth, who is dead. <laughs> That's the first thing we learn about Beth. Beth is dead and she is still on our plane and her father can see her. She died in a car crash. She is 15 and her father is the only person who can see her. Her father is devastated. Uh, her mother died when she was young and her father didn't really have any family left because his family excommunicated him because he married Beth's mom who was an aboriginal and therefore racism. All right. So he has always been part of her, of Beth's mom's family, but never really had anyone from his family. He's devastated. He's having a rough time. So Beth is there with him. And he is an investigator for the police. And he is investigating this fire that burnt down a like troubled children's home where they have found a body in the rubble of the fire and they're trying to figure out who the body is because they don't actually know and through this they go to visit one of the witnesses of the fire there is someone that was found kind of wandering around in the area after the fire and so she is considered a witness her name is Isabel and so it follows like her telling the story of the things that she's seen along with um, Beth's story with her dad and her family and trying to um, connect these things. Isabel's family is also an Aboriginal family. So we have like these things. Yeah. So it's a YA mystery trying to figure out what happened at the fire. What happened with the things that Isabel has seen because it's a trip and just trying to like place all of these things. What I loved about this book is that it is a book written in a magical setting, sort of, because, you know, Beth is dead, but here and the things that Isabel has seen don't really make a whole lot of sense. Um, so it has this magical, this fantasy setting to it, this element to it. But deep down, the book is really about using those mythos of the Aboriginal people to show the racism and the societal issues within that specific culture. So they're using their own culture and the mythology of their culture to show the issues within modern day Australia and also in the past. They do talk about um, how in I think it was 1910 to 1970 it was commonplace for the government to take Aboriginal children from their homes and much like was done with residential schools in the US and in Canada. They would take the children from their homes and their families and try to whitewash them and make them get rid of their culture and make it more white culture um, to make them less savage, which is a horrible fucking word, but to describe someone, but hence air quotes. So it's a book that is an interesting introspective as far as looking at the magical elements of it, but it relates to issues within the real world. I really liked that juxtaposition of it. I like, I like learning about history and about the shitty ass things that white people have done to people throughout the eons. But I also love a fantasy setting. So when you're able to kind of mingle those two things together, it really 
works for me. Yeah? I think the only thing I really didn't like about this book is I wish it had been a little longer. It is fairly short. I think it's about 220 pages. So it is really short, but I did like it. I loved the way that things kind of just work together. This was the book club pick for the Avengers Initiative Reading Challenge for this month. I probably would not have picked it up otherwise, not because I don't think it sound didn't sound good but because I had never heard of it before. One of the reasons why I joined book clubs because I get to learn about books I never would have known about beforehand. So that is where I'm at on September 3rd. I have a couple more books that I have already started. I have started All the Impossible Things by Lindsay Lackey and I have started which <laughs> I'm on page, I'm on chapter six and I've cried every chapter so that's going really well. And I'm also uh, in the middle of uh, what is that other book that I'm reading that I can't think of I think it's The Curiosities and it is a collection of vampire short stories um, the name that I can think of off the top of my head is Maggie Steve Otter but there's a couple of other uh, popular YA authors that are in that as well so I'm about halfway through that I'm gonna read that tonight during live sprints maybe get finished with it I don't know we'll see so that's where I'm at for now and I will come back to you guys when I have finished another book. It is now Monday the 6th. I did finish All the Impossible Things by Lindsay Lackey. I finished that actually Saturday. I ended up giving that a 4.5 out of 5 stars. All the Impossible Things follows our main character Red who is 12 and in a foster care system and the very beginning of it is you see her being picked up from her most recent foster home to go somewhere else they have chosen um, to basically say that she's not the right fit for them. Um, basically the woman's sons are complete and utter assholes to her and torture her and Red has this weird magical thing where she can create and kind of control wind, storms, the weather, that kind of thing. Um, which is not normal in this world and it's not ever really spoken about. It's a very low magic system. There's no real like explanation behind that. Um, so she's being picked up from this foster care home and she's being sent to a new one and she meets the husband and wife and they actually have like this petting zoo. Um, their children are older, their child is older um, and actually has her own young child so they are empty nesters and they both are very excited to have Red there. And Red is in foster care because her only living relative is her mother and her mom was about three years prior picked up for um, having a pill drug problem and so she is in prison and Red is in the foster care system because of that. So the book follows Red's experiences in foster care and you get a little bit of the snippets of what was happening to her in the previous home um, throughout the book as well as um, just it's it's a really big found family element that I really enjoyed. Um, like I said the magic is never really explained but that's okay. I think the character work was done really well. I'm really happy with it. I really love Red as a character as her very realness to a 12 year old with an addicted parent. This book for me was especially the end very moving. I cried for like the first six chapters solid like I cried in every one of the first six chapters and I, I just I really enjoyed it. I think it's a really great story about how you know your blood family is not your family and sometimes the people that you love you need to realize that you're not the best person for them and accept that there's someone out there who is better for them and um, the plot line of all the impossible things is uh, Red has this journal that she made with her grandma prior to her grandma's death of these impossible things th things that people said was impossible like calling climbing the tallest mountain in the world or you know deep sea diving whatever and then they would do research and figure out like the history of someone defeating that impossible thing so they get it, it's basically a book of her learning um you know all of these things are impossible but if you try hard enough they're not and basically going through like her learning about all of these things i really really loved it it was fantastic very quickly the other two things I want to talk about was I did DNF two books the first of which was the Curiosities which um, as I said was like Maggie Steve Otter, Tessa Gratton and there's another one and I can't it's not in here 
um, but the it's right there. I got to about 13% in that. I think I was 13% in and I was like six stories in and I just I knew it was like a collection of short stories but they're just too short for me. I didn't really like any of the ones that I had read and they just were not what I was looking for. Um, so I DNF'd that and because I DNF'd that I went back to Lazaretto. Um, Lazaretto rather. I don't remember the first name but the last name is McKinney Whetstone. I remember that. Um, again here. That was I think the second book that I picked up for the reading vlog of reading Avengers Initiative Reading Challenge host favorites and I wasn't loving it so I decided to put it down until I got to the through the rest of the books for that video which would have been like four other books and The Curiosities was the last book I had of that because I DNF'd that. I didn't really care. I, I was 33% in to Lazaretto and just wasn't really connected to anything, wasn't really curious about what was going to continue to happen, didn't really care. I think that like the first 33% is all set up and it's just slow moving books don't really work that well for me and that was very slow and I just didn't really care about any characters so I bounced. So that's where I'm at now and I will update you guys when there's more to update. Today is the 11th and I have a couple more books to talk to you about. The next book I finished is People We Meet on Vacation by Emily Henry. I gave this a 4.25 out of 5 stars. This book follows Poppy and Alex who met when they were in college um, in a different state and realized that they are from like neighboring small towns back home and so they take this trip back home together at the end of the school year and kind of form this friendship and they agree that every summer they will take a vacation together for one week and just spend the week together as friends and something happened two years prior we don't know what but it's been like 12 years since their friendship started and we're getting both the viewpoint of this current summer that we're on where they haven't spoken for two years and then the previous summers um, just like seeing their relationship develop over the years. Um, it's an adult contemporary romance. I enjoyed it. I think my review was very short um, on Goodreads but basically just said you know if you liked Beach Read and you felt like Beach Read was like a good summer read I think this is a good summer read as well. It takes you a little bit all over the world into different places and what I really enjoyed about this book was the way that they tied in the title, The People We Meet on Vacation. Um, the way that was tied into the narrative really worked for me. Um, I really enjoyed this. Just it was a really good book. I do feel like if you're in a depressive state about being single in your mid-30s, probably skip this one for right now. Because it, it did give me some feels about being 34 and alone. So like, maybe if that's a problem for you, skip it. But otherwise, I enjoyed it. The other update is for Parable of the Sower by Octavia Butler. I was reading this for Beautifully Bookish Bethany's Patreon book club. I DNF'd at 17%. I can understand why this book works for people. Like I can see what about it is interesting. And enjoyable as far as like it's set in this futuristic world where it's really not that future uh, like I think it, the book set takes place in like 2025 uh, but it was written in 93 I think it's set in a world where it's it's vaguely dystopian things are still similar to how they are now but also um, communities have come together to build these walled cities and outside of those walled cities is not a safe place to live and only the rich clearly can afford, can afford the walled cities. Um, it's very similar to a trajectory that we could be on so that's creepy. That aspect of it I think is good but my issue with it was the non-stop just like offhandedly mentioning of rape victims like all over the place like adult women, young children, like very young children, um, people in this girl's community, people that she knew and like they never talk there's no repercussions for any of that. It's just the way that it's talked about it was so nauseating for me it was making me physically ill and I can't I'm not gonna force myself to read a book that's making me physically nauseous 
and so that's why I chose to stop reading it. I just, like, I understand the aspect that that when you have a book like this that is written as like a future view of the world or if you're trying to teach a lesson it's good to make people have visceral reactions to what you're writing but this was too much just too much i chose to walk away i'm feeling pretty good about that uh, if I missed something life-changing or altering, oh well. My next read's gonna be The Girl from the Wall by Ren Chepeco and also The Holdout by Jeffrey Kluger. Those are the physical and audio books that I have next, so we'll see how long it takes me to get through those. Today I need to talk to you about four books because I'm behind. So the first I want to talk about is The Thursday Murder Club by Richard Oseman, which I was reading for the Wheatberry Book Club's pick for this month. I DNF'd it, was not having a good time, was very bored, did not enjoy. DNF'd. Okay, moving on. We then have The Girl from the Well by Ren Chepeco. I gave this a 4.25 out of 5 stars. I was reading this for the AuthorTube Chat Book Club pick for September, October. We picked a spooky book and I think it was very spooky. Um, the book kind of follows this ghost character who basically punishes people, mostly men, who injure children um, or who kill children. And so she can see like all of the children that these people have killed and she basically takes revenge upon that human for killing children and then lets the children's spirits move on to the afterlife and she finds this young boy who has a dark spirit of his own and she has to kind of figure out what that dark spirit means and she kind of latches onto this boy even though maybe she really shouldn't uh, but she does kind of latch onto him and there's like a cousin involved so there's like some family dynamics there's some weird weird things that happen uh, but overall I really 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 enjoyed it. Um, Kate and I will discuss it a lot more during the AuthorTube Chat Book Club which will be the third Tuesday of October. I don't know exactly what day that is but it's the third Tuesday of October at 6 30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time as always uh, and that will be on my channel. Really enjoyed that. I then read Holdout by Jeffrey Kluger which I gave a 3.75 out of 5 stars. Um, now that I'm I like when I think back on it I'm waffling a little on that rating because there was a large percentage of the beginning of this book when I wanted to DNF it. Um, I wasn't in love with the way that the story is told uh, just based off of like there were just things that didn't work for me. It was very technical. Uh, it's set based off of this astronaut in space and essentially something goes wrong on the space station that she's on and they're supposed to abandoned ship essentially and she chooses not to and to stay and she's doing it for like socio-economical political reasons. There's like a whole like side plot that has to do with governments and society and human rights and all of those things and it involves like someone that she's related to and you could there were parts that you could just really tell were written by a man and there were a lot of things that just like ugh. but also there were parts that really made me feel um that were written very well um describing some of the things in in horrific graphic detail and kind of discussing what some of these people in what we would consider like a third world country but you know what some of these people go through and and like in the amazon and the forest fires and and all of these things and there was a lot of very high emotional moments and there was like this really big bond between the astronauts even after um the other two astronauts had left the space station and she was still there so like, there were a lot of good components but i don't know that i necessarily loved it as much as i could have okay i then read the love hypothesis by ali hazelwood it got a perfect 5.25 out of 5 stars. This book was absolutely fantastic. I will have talked more about that in my ARC wrap up. So if you want to know more of my full thoughts on it, you can check it there. I'll link it down below. But this book follows Olive, who is a woman in STEM. She is, I think, like an undergrad 
or I don't remember college terms because I didn't go to college. I mean, I did, but I didn't finish college. And I don't remember technical terms. Anyway, she accidentally uh, kisses a professor at the school. It's like not a professor that's over her. It's over, he's over like a completely different department. Their paths do not cross on the daily. So totally fine. Uh, and he's just a, like, not even a decade older than her so not super creepy uh but essentially like she accidentally kisses him and then they kind of like start fake dating and it's this whole thing and it is fan-fucking-tastic so if you again if you want to know more of my full thoughts will be linked down below i think that's all i have to update you guys on for currently i am reading spoiler alert by olivia dade currently i'm also reading a uh, curse and ash by julie our friend at Pages and Pens. But I haven't finished either of those, so we can't talk about them because I'm not done. So, 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 so. New day, new nickel. Uh, I did not read anything else in September. It is currently October 13th. Uh, <laughs> I didn't film an outro for this, so uh, I was editing the video. For tomorrow and realized I was out of clips and did not have an outro. So here we are on a less quality camera and probably a better quality microphone though. Nah. Anyway, um, so when I left you last, I said I was reading Spoiler Alert by Olivia Dade. I ended up DNFing that. I just found the idea of it too implausible which is my fault because I went into it knowing what it was and I thought I would like it better than I did and it was just so unbelievable and just like the extra line on the side of the line and I just I didn't make it very far I think like 13% or so and I just decided to walk away which is sad because I had an arc of the second book and obviously I'm not gonna read that because I had just met that character that we follow in the second book in the first book and he was an absolute shit show and a total dick and so I have no interest in reading that either so I DNF that. Um, the other book that we talked about was A Curse and Ash by Julie Santopoulos and I didn't finish this in November. I didn't read it until October on the 5th on release day so you'll have to wait until my October wrap up to get my thoughts on this one. Lucky you. I may have another ARC reading video going up before the end of the month. And it may be in that. So make it a little early. I have been trying to, or I will be trying to, I mean, let's just talk about it while we're here, uh, because this is a wrap up video. I will be trying to do more, um, actually reading some of the arcs that I get <laughs> before release date. Um, I have about four or five a month planned for the next few months. So my goal is to read all of them the month prior and then do like a wrap up video of the arcs I read that month at the end of the month for the following month. So at the end of October, I would want to have a wrap up in for all of the arcs for November. Yeah. I don't know that that's necessarily going to happen because I only have one arc in November and it is later in the month. So I'm probably going to try to do, I'm catching up on some backlog right now. Um, so I have like A Curse and Ash and I've read... A few other ones this month already. I think I'll have four or five by the end of the month to talk about. So I'm working on that. And there were some books that I talked about in this video. People We Meet on Vacation, Hold Out, and The Love Hypothesis a little more in depth in the ARC video that I posted earlier this week. So I will link that in the description box down below for you if you would like more of my thoughts on those. I do also have, as always, my Goodreads links linked below. But I... I'm running behind on this wrap up clearly. Um, so everything's just kind of, I'm, I'm behind on everything. I've been behind for months. I'm trying to get my shit together. Will I be successful? I don't know, but I'm trying. And I appreciate you guys for sticking out with me through all of the crazy. That is all I have for you today. I post reading, writing, book, and planner related videos a couple of times a week. If you don't want to miss anything I have going in the future, make sure you hit the subscribe button and the notification bell down below. And until then, I'll see you guys next time. Bye.
Juliet, to Juliet, I have news. Today, well, it's October, and we, you know, do 31 books in October. Today is October 13th, and I am on book 12. Actually, I'm currently on book 13. I have finished 12 books, and TNF2, and, and I'm halfway through my 13th book. Then I might finish by the end of the night tonight, maybe. So, that's your preview for October's wrap-up. Mm.